This video lecture provides an overview of water biology topics. In general, we are concerned with water biology because of the direct and indirect influences on human health. Even though we recognize that human health is impacted by human wastes, some 90% of wastewater in developing countries is discharged directly into rivers and streams without treatment. Today, water-related diseases cause approximately 80% of all illness in developing countries. This lecture focuses on basics in water biology. The broader topic of water biology focuses on many different organisms, including bacteria, protozoa, microscopic crustacean, viruses, algae, and fungi, and it and the important diseases that result from biological contamination of water resources. In regards to water science, we often focus on indicator bacteria, or those bacteria that when present in water, food, etc., indicate the potential presence of fecal material and associated fecal pathogens. We define biology as the study of life, or the study of living organisms. A branch of biology Microbiology deals with the study of microscopic life, or life that is seen through the lens of the microscope. Have you ever stopped to consider where the term waterborne comes from in regards to the transmission of microorganisms? Water acts as a means of transmission for these microorganisms, that is, water facilitates the movement of microorganisms from host to host throughout the environment. Biologists classify life according to standard taxonomy, and especially for the broader classes, these are organized around morphology, which includes form or structure. Today, we classify life according to the binomial system of nomenclature under which all organisms are described by a two-word scientific name including the genus and species. The genus and species are the lowest consistent level of taxonomy assigned to organisms, with the broad scheme following kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. In some cases, a species may be subdivided into a subspecies, a variety, or a form, but the species is the lowest consistent taxonomic level in the classification scheme. In writing out the scientific name, capitalize the genus, but not the species. In water science, classification of microorganisms can be simplified using three kingdoms, animal, plant, and protista, which includes the single-celled organisms. As Spellman, 2008, page 125 notes, quote, an eukaryotic organism is characterized by a cellular organization that includes a well-defined nuclear membrane. The prokaryotes have structural organization that sets them off from other organisms. They are simple cells characterized by a nucleus lacking a limiting membrane, an endoplasmic reticulum, chloroplast, and mitochondria. They are remarkably adaptable, existing abundantly in the soil, the sea, and fresh water. Cells are considered fundamental units of life, so it makes sense to spend a bit of time understanding important inner cell components and distinctions in the types of cells studied in biology. The term for the cell comes from Hooke's 1663 discovery of cells in cork. The modern tenets of cell theory include, quote, all known living things are made up of cells, the cell is the structural and functional unit of all living things. All cells come from pre-existing cells by division. Cells contain hereditary information which is passed from cell to cell during cell division. All cells are basically the same in chemical composition. And all energy flow of life occurs within cells. Spellman, 2008, page 126. 
There are some interesting and important distinctions in plant and animal cells which can be highlighted in the two graphics shown. On the left, the typical mature plant cell has a rigid cell wall, whereas on the right, the animal cell has an elastic cell membrane. Quote, the cell is the smallest functioning unit of a living thing that still has the characteristics of the whole organism. Spellman, 2008, page 127. There are two fundamental cell types, that is, prokaryotic, meaning before the nucleus, and eukaryotic, meaning true nucleus. Cells may exist solo or be part of multicellular units, where individual cells develop specializations and form tissues and organs with specific purposes. The plant and animal cells are examples of eukaryotic cells, and as each has a nucleus. Quote, plant cells are generally distinguished from animal cells by one, presence of cell walls, chloroplast, and central vacuoles in plants, and their absence in animals, and two, the presence of lysosomes and centrioles in animals and their absence in plants. Spellman, 2008, page 129. In contrast, the bacterial cell shown is an example of a prokaryotic cell. As Spellman notes, prokaryotes are unicellular organisms that do not develop or differentiate into multicellular forms. While some bacteria may grow into filaments, each cell maintains its independence or existence. Prokaryotes exist or are capable of doing so all across planet Earth, from our bodies to the deep oceans and everywhere in between. While there are many types of prokaryotes, perhaps the best known is the bacteria. As Davidson, 2009, paragraph 1 notes, bacteria, quote, are as unrelated to human beings as living things can be, but bacteria are essential to human life and life on the planet. Although they are notorious for their role in causing human diseases, from tooth decay to the Black Plague, there are beneficial species that are essential to good health. End quote. A quick comparison and contrast of prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells shows that while they are certainly different, they also share some characteristics. As Spellman notes, quote, all cell types are bounded by a plasma membrane that encloses proteins and usually nucleic acids such as DNA and RNA. The following references were consulted in developing this video lecture.